Dear viewers, greetings. In this video, we are going to see about normal microbial flora of human body. Normal microbial flora. And the term normal microbial flora or normal microbiota or indigenous microbiota denotes the population of microorganisms that inhabit the skin and mucous membrane of uh, healthy normal persons. In a healthy human, uh, the internal tissues like uh, blood, brain, uh, muscles, etc. are uh, normally free of microorganisms. However, uh, the surface tissues like uh, skin and mucous membrane are constantly in contact with environmental organisms and become uh, readily colonized by various microbial species. Uh, the mixture of organisms uh, regularly found at any autonomical site is referred to as normal flora. The normal flora of uh, human consists of a uh, few eukaryotic, prote uh, eukaryotic fungi and uh, protist, but bacteria are the uh, most numerous and obvious uh, microbial components of the normal flora. Uh, all the human tissues uh, which are directly or indirectly exposed to external surrounding uh, have the microbial flora. Uh, such tissue in human includes skin, gastrointestinal tract, urinary tract, uh, respiratory tract and uh, eyes. Internal organs such as uh, blood, kidney, uh, heart, uh, lungs, brain, etc. are sterile in normal healthy individuals. And therefore, if microorganism is present in these internal organisms, it is referred as uh, disease conditions. Uh, healthy uh, fetus in, in uterus is uh, basically sterile. A child first gets its normal flora during the birth by uh, contact with uh, vaginal flora of mother and after uh, after birth, additional microbial flora are established through the source of uh, food, water and air and other factors. Types of normal microflora. Uh, the human microbiota are primarily classified into two groups. One is resident microflora and the second one is transient microflora. Uh, this table shows the difference between the resident microflora and transient microflora. Uh, first, the resident microflora remains a part of a uh, normal microbiota of a person throughout life. And the transient microflora remains in the body for only a few hours, days or months before disappearing. Uh, the resident microflora are found on the skin and mucous membrane of the digestive tract, upper respiratory tract, distal portion of urethra and vagina. And next, the transient microbiota are found in the same location uh, as the resident members of the normal microbiota. Uh, next, the resident microflora uh, is a fixed type of microorganisms which are generally non-pathogenic in nature. And the transient microflora are uh, intermediate types of microorganisms which can be non-pathogenic or potentially pathogenic in nature. Uh, next, uh, the resident microflora confines permanently to the skin's uh, deeper area, uh, but the transient microflora confines temporarily to the skin's superficial layers for hours, days or weeks. And next, the resident microflora can re-establish themselves if distributed, uh, but the transient microflora cannot re-establish themselves. Uh, the resident microflora uh, cannot be flushed off from the anatomical site, uh, but the transient microflora can be flushed off from the, from the anatomical site. Finally, uh, the resident microflora is not associated with uh, disease transmission, uh, but the transient microflora is closely associated with disease transmission as they serve as opportunistic microorganisms derived from the environment. Next, characteristics of the normal flora. Uh, normal flora contains uh, more than 200 bacterial species, among which uh, gram-positive bacteria are predominant. And the factors influencing the normal microbial flora includes uh, age, diet, nutrition, uh, sex, and immune conditions of a person. Uh, viruses and parasites uh, do not constitute the normal microflora. And under normal, normal conditions, microflora is harmless or even beneficial. Uh, any disturbances in the normal flora uh, may harm the host through the consequence of opportunistic microorganisms that may eventually cause disease or an infection. 
a human is uh, colonized with the normal flora once a neonate or newborn baby is passed through the mother's vaginal tract or exposed to the environment finally a newborn baby establishes the oral and nasopharyngeal flora uh, within few hours and after one day uh, resident flora establishes uh, in the lower intestinal tract of the neonate in the upcoming slides uh, we are going to see the distribution and occurrence of normal microflora in skin conjunctiva mouth teeth upper respiratory tract lower respiratory tract stomach small intestine large intestine upper digestive tract lower digestive tract and genito urinary tract skin and the skin is home to a wide variety of microorganisms uh, most of which are even helpful to the host uh, it is most likely to carry uh, transitory flora due to its uh, frequent exposure to the environment uh, however there is a consistent and distinct resident flora that is altered in various anatomical region by secretion or exposure to the mucosal membranes uh, starting with the external surfaces uh, the skin harbors 1000 to 10000 microorganisms per square centimeter a human skin layer possesses the outermost epidermis and inner dermis layer uh, many bacterial species exist on the skin's epidermis layer uh, which do not uh, penetrate until there is no cut or abrasions over the skin surface Uh, skin is the large organ exposed to the environment and it daily uh, counters with a large number of microorganisms and the factors like uh, skin dryness uh, low ph and uh, secretion of inhibitory substances uh, discourage the microbial colonization in the skin uh, the dry skin resist more microbial growth as the condition is not favor- favorable to them and skin is constantly exposed to and is in Uh, contact with the environment the skin is particularly apt to contain transient microorganisms so the normal skin inhabits uh, 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 4 organisms uh, per square centimeter the predominant resident microorganisms of the skin are cornubacterium species propionibacterium species staphylococcus epidermis micrococcus species viridian streptococcus enterococcus species acinetobacter species and occasionally staphylococcus aureus and peptostreptococcus uh, low ph uh, fatty acids in sebaceous secretions and presence of the enzyme lysozymes are the important factors for eliminating non resident microorganisms from the skin next is eyes conjunctiva the membrane that constitutes the lining of the eyelids and the eyeball is termed as conjunctiva and it is a very delicate membrane which contains uh, sparse microflora uh, due to the high moisture content or continuous flow of tears uh, by the eyes blinking action uh, the membrane eliminates the microorganisms and next is the lacrimal secretion includes the lysozyme that also lyses the microbial cells uh, tears wash out uh, most microbiota from the eyes so there are very few compared to the skin and the predominant microorganisms inhabit the eye conjunctiva are staphylococcus epidermis staphylococcus aureus streptococcus pneumoniae neisseria species morzella spe- species and cornubacterium species and next mouth uh, mouth provides a favorable environment for bacterial growth due to adequate Uh, moisture content and dissolved food particles however uh, the factors like the continuous flow of saliva and uh, discrimination of the epithelial cells it's just uh, mechanical flushing of the microorganisms from the oval cavity to the stomach's acid environment uh, where the digestive enzymes destroy many of the microorganisms uh, some microorganisms resist mechanical flushing and remains in the oral cavity and the normal microflora of uh, mouth includes staphylococcus species micrococcus species neisseria species actinobacteria lactobacillus species and some yeast like uh, candida species next teeth uh, arrows and facultative arrows uh, resides within the mouth before the first teeth appears but uh, the tissue surrounding teeth provides an anaerobic environment 
due to which the anaerobic bacteria like bacteroids and fusobacterium becomes more evident. Uh, besides, uh, Streptococcus mutants adhere to the teeth surface by secreting extracellular uh, glucan and primarily causes the dental caries. Uh, lactobacillus species and actinobacteria are the secondary invaders of the tooth decay and uh, trichomonas uh, tenax, which is a flagellated protozoan, uh, sometimes appear in the gingival margins and tooth cavities. Next, nasopharynx or upper respiratory tract. Uh, the nasopharynx of the uh, infant is sterile at birth, uh, but in two to three days time, it occurs the flora carried by the mothers and attendants. Uh, the nasopharynx is a natural habitat of the common pathogenic bacteria causing uh, infection of the nose, throat, uh, bronchi and uh, lungs. And the normal flora of the nose harbors uh, diphtheoids, that is uh, non-pathogenic cornibacterium species, Staphylococcus species, Streptococcus species, Fusobacterium species, Haemophila species, uh, Morizella uh, lacnata, uh, the gram-negative cocci Veilonella species, and the yeast Candida species. And next, lower respiratory tract. Uh, the lower respiratory tract is free of microorganisms. The trachea and bronchi uh, lack normal flora due to the cilia driven upward movement of mucus. However, the microorganisms that enters the lungs alveoli are distracted by the alveolar macrophages via the phagocytosis process. Next, stomach. A stomach receives numerous microorganisms from the oral cavity or nasopharynx. Uh, the stomach destroys the microbial cells by providing an acidic environment through the secretion of uh, gastric juices or hydrochloric acids. Uh, Lactobacillus species and Candida species are evidently seen in the stomach. Next is uh, small intestine. Uh, the duodenum portion of the small intestine possesses uh, gram positive cocci and bacilli, and the jejunum portion of the small intestine inhabits enterococcus species, Lactobacillus species, uh, diphtheroids or uh, non pathogenic uh, cornibacterium, and the yeast candida species and the helium portion of the uh, small intestine occupies a large number of anaerobic bacteria and the members of the bacteria which belongs to the uh, enterobacteriaceae family. Next large intestine. A large intestine has a vast number of microbes and the fecal matter comprises uh, nearly a hundred billion bacteria per gram with weight. Uh, thus uh, a large intestine removes a large number of the microbial population through the peristaltic movement of the virus. Uh, mucus, is the, mucus in the large intestine plays a critical role in the removal of microorganisms. Uh, the microflora along with the fecal matter adheres with the mucus layer and consequently rolls up into the small masses. At last, the microorganisms in the feces leave the large intestine by passing through the anus. Uh, bacterioids uh, Fusarium species, Pifidobacterium species, uh, Eubacterium species and Lactobacillus species are the anaerobes that commonly inhabit the large intestine and uh, Escherichia coli, Proteus species, Klebsiella species and Enterobacter species are the facultative anaerobes that resides in the colon region of the large intestine. Uh, yeast like Candida species and protozoan uh, Trichomonas hominis inhabits the cecum region of the large intestine. Common cells like endomoeba species, endolimat species and iodomoeba species also resides uh, within the colon region of the uh, large intestine. A yeah, breastfed and uh, bottle fed uh, infants have gram positive bacteria in their intestine until they substitute a liquid food by solid food. Thus, gram negative bacteria like uh, bacteroidus species predominate in the intestinal flora of the adult type diet. And next, upper digestive tract. Uh, microbes colonize uh, surfaces of teeth, uh, gingiva, uh, lineage or lining of uh, cheeks and pharynx and they are found in saliva in large number. Uh, dozens of uh, species have never been identified and some of the identified species includes actinobacteria, 
Bacteroides species, Cornibacterium species, Haemophila species, Lactobacillus species, Neisseria species, Staphylococcus species, Tryponema species, the Protozoan Entamoeba species, and Trichomonas species. Next, lower digestive tract. Uh, the bacteria are mostly strict anaerobes. Uh, though some facultative, facultative anaerobes are also uh, resident. The microflora of lower digestive tract includes um, Bacteroids, Bifidobacterium species, Clostridium species, Enterococcus species, Escherichia species, Fusobacterium species, Lactobacillus species, Proteus species, Shigella species, the East Candida species, and the Protozoans, uh, Entamoeba species, and Trichomonas species. Finally, a uh, genitourinary tract. Uh, the excretory system, which includes uh, kidneys, uh, ureters, and uh, urinary bladder, is generally sterile, uh, except for the urethra. Uh, Mycobacterium uh, smegmat uh, smegmatis is a harmful common cell. And it is found in the secretions of uh, both males and female genitalia. Sometimes they may pose the confusion with the tubercle bacilli. The urethra of both males and females uh, inhabits Staphylococcus epidermis, Cornibacterium species, Streptococcus faecalis, and Neisseria species. Uh, a male reproductive organ inhabits uh, Mycobacterium species, Bacteroides species, Fusobacterium species, Lactobacillus species, Staphylococcus species, Streptococcus species, and Peptostreptococcus species. And next, the female re reproductive organ inhabits Lactobacillus species, Bacteroides species, Clostridium species, Staphylococcus species, Streptococcus species, Enterococcus species, uh, Dithyroids or uh, non pathogenic Cornibacterium species, Candida albicans, and Trichomonas vaginalis. Uh, microbiota change uh, as acidity in the uh, female reproductive organ. Uh, changes during the menstrual cycle and the flow of urine prevents uh, extensive colonization of the urinary bladder or urethra. Advantages of normal microbial flora. Uh, the, uh, normal microbial flora have five advantages. The first advantage is normal microbial flora prevents or suppresses the entry of the pathogen. The second advantage is normal microbial flora synthesize the vitamins, especially vitamin K and several B group vitamins. The third advantage is the normal flora evokes the antibodies production. Uh, these antibodies cross react with the pathogens having related or uh, shared antigens, thus raising the immune status of the host against the invading pathogens. The fourth advantage is uh, colonies produced by some organisms of normal microflora have a harmful effect on the disease-causing pathogens. And finally, uh, the fifth advantage is endotoxins liberated by normal flora may help the defense mechanism of the human body. Finally, disadvantages of the normal microbial flora. Uh, microbial flora have three major disadvantages. The first disadvantage is Normal microbial flora become pathogen or pathogenic when the immunity is lower. The second disadvantage is normal microbial flora may act as uh, pathogens in different issues and that is other than their normal habitat. Uh, for example, normal flora of intestine may cause urinary tract infections. And finally, the third disadvantage of the normal microbial flora is uh, they cause confusion in diagnosis due to their ubiquitous presence in the body and the resemblance to some of the pathogens. Dear viewers, thank you for your support. Thank you.